So Edwin Hubble didn't stop at Andromeda. He looked at the distances to many other galaxies, and he found that overall most galaxies are moving away from each other. This was showing us that the universe is expanding. It was for this amazing discovery that the universe is getting bigger and even finding the scale of the universe to begin with um, that Hubble ended up being the namesake for the Hubble Space Telescope, which was a revolutionary telescope that was launched in 1990. The Hubble Space Telescope was launched into space, put into orbit around the Earth, so that it could get above the Earth's atmosphere, and that gives us some of the clearest views we've ever gotten of space around us. It lets us see things that are fainter and much further out. And so having that clear view is really important. The Earth's atmosphere is basically what causes stars to twinkle. It bends around light, and so getting above that gives us a much better view of space. And the Hubble Space Telescope has also been running for an incredible 30 years. The telescope actually just had its 30th anniversary last month, and the team released a special image to celebrate the anniversary that we're gonna take a look at. So we're bringing up this picture nicknamed the Cosmic Reef. What we're seeing here is some nebulas. Nebula is just a word that means cloud. So these are clouds of gas that are star forming regions. Um, they're in a dwarf galaxy, a satellite galaxy of ours called the Large Magellanic Cloud. You can only see it from the southern hemisphere, but that puts them at 163,000 light years away. So just outside the Milky Way, not as far as Andromeda, our next major large galaxy. But these were imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope where we see that there are stars being born here, hot massive stars that are heating up the gas. The different colors we see are showing us different elements that are glowing. The blue is where it's really hot, where we're seeing oxygen get hot enough to start glowing. And the red is showing us where hydrogen and nitrogen is hot enough to be glowing. And they're getting heated again by these massive stars that are in the cloud and being born. Let's take a closer view of them by flying through the cloud. We're going to look at an artist's depiction of what it would be like to fly through the cosmic reef. This is based off of the real Hubble data, so it gives us a three-dimensional view. And it's the blue dots that are sort of in more isolated areas that are the really massive stars. They have stellar winds flying off of them, clearing out some space, and even causing some of the colorful ridges above the stars there. And we'll also see a view of this blue structure. So this nebula is actually just around one star in the center there that is massive and very bright, over 200,000 times as bright as the sun. And this is a star that is having huge outbursts of gas flying off of it. And someday it will end its life as a supernova. And so that'll be an even brighter sort of explosion where the, all the outer layers of the star are cast off quickly and violently. The Hubble legacy is filled with photos like the Cosmic Reef, thousands of them. But perhaps the most important picture that Hubble took was one called the Hubble Deep Field. It was taken in 1995, and it was where the Hubble Space Telescope was pointed for 10 days straight at a patch of sky in the Big Dipper. They're pretty close to where M101 is, but this patch of sky was um, supposed to be empty. The director chose this spot and these observations. Um, the director of the Hubble Space Telescope at the time, Dr. Robert Williams. And it was controversial that he did this project because a lot of astronomers didn't want to see valuable Hubble time um, wasted looking at nothing. He was picking this empty patch of sky. He even used telescopes on the ground to check ahead of time that there wasn't very much in this area. But he wanted to see what was there, what Hubble could find. And let's take a look at that empty patch of nothingness. We're going to zoom in on the Hubble deep field.
So here's our empty patch of sky. It's filled with galaxies. The Hubble Deep Field here has over 1,500 galaxies in it. And we actually have done follow-ups, taking more and more pictures, stacking them together, getting longer and longer observations, and even looking at a few other areas of the sky. I'll bring up another picture here. That's the Hubble Ultra Deep Field. It's a different patch of sky. And this one is containing over 10,000 galaxies. And these are in very small areas of the sky, 1 16th the size of the M101 galaxy we saw earlier. So this is showing us that the universe isn't just big in size, but that it is filled with galaxies. It's vast in how many galaxies and stars are out there. Over 100 billion galaxies, each one with over 100 billion stars in it. We'll zoom away. And we'll look for another constellation in the sky. Our next constellation is a little more northwest, so a little further towards the left side of your screen there. But actually nearby the constellation is a very bright object I want to mention first. Not a star, but a planet. We have the planet Venus out tonight, a bit after sunset. Venus will be incredibly bright. It'll come out before any of the other stars. Um, Venus is not always going to stay in this exact spot to the west after sunset. You'll find it in different places from month to month and year to year. That's true of all the planets. The planets are all going around the sun just like we are. So we find that they move across the distant background of stars. But you will always find Venus sort of leading or trailing the sun in the sky to the west just after sunset or in the sky to the east just before sunrise. And that's because Venus is closer to the sun than we are. So we're always going to see it um, sort of nearer the sun in the sky.